how to test the regression assumptions for a mediation with process model number 4. In general, most statistical procedures have assumptions. If those are violated, you can get test results that are seriously wrong. This applies as well to a mediation analysis with Hayes process macro. Hi, my name is Arndt Rigosch, I'm a statistical consultant and in this video I show you how to check the different regression assumptions for process model 4. Process model 4 is based on two regressions. One, the independent variable predicting the mediator and two, the mediator and the independent variable predicting the dependent variable. And if you have covariates, those are part of both regression models as well. And those two regressions only give correct results if the relevant assumptions are met. In this video I show you six assumptions and how to check them. First, the normality assumption. In regression the normality assumption is about the residuals. For that reason you can only check this assumption after having performed the regression analysis. Because only then do you have residuals. To test the normality you have to test it twice for both regression models. The model predicting the mediator and the model predicting the dependent variable. So you run regressions with SPSS or with R, depending on which program you use. You save the residuals and then you test normality. And there are many different ways to test normality. You can look at a histogram, at a QQ plot, at a PP plot, you can use the Shapiro-Wilk test, you can look at skewness and kurtosis. But there's an alternative. Instead of checking the normality assumption, you can use a procedure that doesn't need normality, and that's bootstrapping. In process model 4, the indirect effect is always bootstrapped, but if you want robust results without checking the normality assumption for the A path and the B path and the direct e effect C prime, you can request bootstrapping for all model coefficients. Then you don't need to check normality. What to do if the normality assumption is violated? Again, the first option is using bootstrapping. Other possibilities would be to try to transform variables in a way that then the residuals are normally distributed or in a very large sample to rely on the central limit theorem. The second assumption, homoscedasticity, that is homoscedasticity of the residuals. So again, first you need the regression to be able to check for homoscedasticity. You run separate regressions outside of process, you save the predicted values and the residuals and then you can test homoscedasticity by looking at a scatter plot with the predicted values on the x-axis and the residuals on the y-axis. If you don't want to rebuild the two regression models outside of process, there's an alternative. You could use robust methods that don't rely on the homoscedasticity assumption. Here you have two options. You can use a heteroscedasticity consistent standard error or robust standard error, HC3 or HC4. You can request those within process or you could use bootstrapping, as in the case for normality, because bootstrapping is fairly robust against violations of the homoscedasticity assumption as well. What to do if the assumption is violated? Robust standard errors or bootstrapping. Before we go to the third assumption, if you need help with your mediation model with process, I provide video consultations for students around the globe. You can find a link to my services in the video description. Third assumption, linearity. This assumption assumes a linear relationship between the predictor variables and the criterion variables. That is, between the independent variable and the mediator, the independent variable and the dependent variable, the mediator and the dependent variable, and if you have covariates in your model, between the covariates and the mediator and the dependent variable as well. And you can check them by running these scatter plots. You only have to do this for continuous predictor variables. If you have a binary independent variable or binary covariate, you don't need to check for linearity. What to do if the assumption is violated? Then you could use polynomial path modeling. Polynomial, that is, you would include, in addition, for instance, to the independent variable, the squared value of the independent variable. But since you can't do this within process, I would use path modeling with Lavan or Amos. The next assumption is the independence assumption, that the observations are independent from each other. Violations of this assumption can happen in cross-sectional data if you have observations nested within groups, for instance students nested within classes. Violations can also happen in longitudinal data if you measure the same variable at different time points in your study and include all those time points in one mediation analysis. There are no statistical tests available for this assumption. The Durbin-Watson test that is sometimes used for that purpose 
only makes sense for time series data. So you have to look at the sampling process, whether you have a violation of the independence assumption. If this assumption is violated, you can't use process. You can use multi-level path modeling, for instance with Lavan, or you could use path modeling with the so-called cluster robust standard errors that correct for the effect of the dependence of the data. Next assumption, no strong multicollinearity. Normally you check that by looking at variance inflation factors, whether they are all below 10. For that you would have again to run the two regressions I showed you earlier outside of process. If you don't want to rebuild your regression models, for instance because you have used robust methods to deal with possible non-normality and heteroscedasticity, then there is a second possibility. You could look at the correlations between all your variables. And if between all predictor variables, the dependent variable does not count, but between all predictor variables the correlations are below 0.70, then in general you won't have problematic multicollinearity. What to do if the assumption is violated, if you have a variance inflation factor above 10? There is not that much you can do. What I would recommend is reading this article by Aubreen, A Caution Regarding Rules of Thumb for Variance Inflation Factors, where he claims that in many cases this violation isn't that problematic. And the last assumption, no important outliers, because outliers can bias the results of regressions and thereby of your mediation analysis. In order to check for outliers, you run the two regressions and you save diagnostics. You can assess outliers by looking at residuals, by looking at Cook's distance, by looking at diff beta. If you don't want to rebuild the regressions outside of process, you should at least look at univariate box plots. So for all your variables, whether you have outliers for that specific variable. However, this is not as good as full outlier diagnostics based on the two regressions, because with univariate box plots, you can only identify univariate outliers that are outliers for a specific variable. What to do if you have outliers? I would recommend a sensitivity check. I would run model 4 twice. One time with a complete data set and a second time after deleting the outliers. If both times you get basically similar results, not exactly the same results but similar results when it comes to the significance and how large the effects are, then you know that your results have not been heavily influenced by outliers. The other possibility would be to delete the outliers and only report the results after deleting the outliers. I'm not a big fan of that because you can lose important information. So that's it for assumption checks for process model 4. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.